Bueno, amigos, estamos en uno de los boots que más ganas teníamos de visitar. Y esto es Super 7, Super 7, que nosotros conocimos desde San Diego Comic Con. Y ahora por fin podemos hablar con ellos y tenemos el vistazo de la línea que viene, todo lo que va a estar saliendo. Y para ello tenemos ni más ni menos que al dueño, a Brian. Hi, Brian. Welcome. Thank you. Now, please show us what, what you have. I mean, we know you were uh, making... Um, uh, Uh, a noise on, on, on the toy <laughs> business with those uh, uh, Masters of the Universe figures. Yes. But now you have that line, which it was exactly. uh, Maddie Collector. Uh, Maddie left. Collector. Yeah, so we took over the Maddie Collector business. So for the large scale ultra deluxe figures. So we're showing off the first wave of the classics figures here with Hawk and Quake and Lodor and Fangor. And then the first wave of the filmation figures that are meant to look like the cartoon, uh, dealing with Hordak, Man-at-Arms, Triclops, and Tila. And then, you know, we're doing some repaints for PowerCon of some classic concept figures and some mini comic colors. And, you know, this, is, this line's been going on for a long time, and we're pretty fortunate to be able to just extend it and keep going on with it. It's a wonderful line of figures. And then the next thing we're doing is sort of, earlier this year we did the first cartoon in Masters of the Universe in 20-something years with uh, uh, the Three Terrors. And so we made new vintage-style figures of the, the villains from the new animation. So we started there. We're going to be remaking the two most well-known Kenner prototypes, I mean, Mattel prototypes that were never made in Hero and Eldor. And then we're sort of relaunching the five-and-a-half-inch line into characters that were sort of never made and should have been. So Hordak in the correct filmation colors instead of gray. Yeah. Doing She-Ra instead of the rooted hair sculpted like a Tila. And then Skeletor and He-Man updated where, you know, they're like Skeletor's cowl and shoulders and everything have been updated to match the cartoon. Yeah, this will have uh, featured the, the classic uh, movement of yeah. the Mattel. The, yeah, the, the twist the, the and spin, punch. Twist and punch yeah. yeah, we'll still have the twist and punch. So, yeah, it'll be just like the old figures, but new new figures and then there's a lot of characters that just never made it to plastic in this line that deserve to be made i know the well, well here's the 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 the, old, the the first and second wave yeah that's the first and second wave of the three and three quarter figures we did uh so sort of a throwback the original concept was when they started masters of the universe they started making it while star wars figures were very popular so we sort of made up this history like what happened, what was the product development, and they would have started with three and three quarter figures and evolved into the final figures that they made. So we were like, what would they have looked like if they had been made as traditional three and three quarter figures? What about those? Those are the Japanese vinyl figures that we make uh, over in Japan, obviously. <laughs> and sort of they're, they're a much more high-end thing, but the really cool thing about that is we can really have a lot of fun with them. So if you look like that, sort of lavender and green Skeletor yeah. with the speckles in the chest. That's, a, that's inspired by a bootleg called Speclatron. Okay. So we're actually taking old yeah. bootleg colors of Skeletor yeah. and He-Man and remaking them as actual toys. So we're coming full circle here. Take a step into the future of Masters of the Universe. I, uh, I see this is uh, Series 3? Yes. That's the, uh, those are actually the gypsum casts. That's what the molds are made from of the new line of figures. So we've got, as I'm looking through here, Cobra Khan, Battle Armor, Skeletor, Zodak, Battle Armor, He-Man, Stratos, and Tila. So the three and three quarters has been a lot of fun. People seem to be really excited about that line, and we really like making it. It's a lot of fun to do. And you have uh, evolved in, into the areas, and you had Pretty much all the fun that we never had in the 80s. <laughs> like, uh, I mean, there were figures, I mean, and now I'm Robotech, it was Matchbox who was made in. Yep, Matchbox but made those. Now you have the, well, but we had the characters. Now you have the, the, the Veritex. Yeah, like back in the 80s, yeah, you had to get the Veritex and they're the big elaborate die cast thing. So yeah. we wanted to come back and make a line of three and three quarters to do the Veritex, do the SDF1, do the battle pods, do all those different characters, and just, yeah, just to have some fun with it. Make a, make robots in three and three quarter. And you will, uh, I don't know, probably try to give us another version of the characters, Recounter and Lisa Hayes and stuff. 
Yeah, we've got those uh, next. First, first things first. I want to, I want to get these done right. first. You know, it's like I, I need the VFs before I, before yeah. I need Min May. <laughs> you have um, Alien. So this is a new line that we're doing. It's called Reanimated. This will come out in the fall. Uh, and what the idea here is, we're sort of taking that classic animated series look that you see across Batman and Justice League and some of the other cartoons. And we're like, okay, let's take that simplified, streamlined, animated look. And how do we bring that into other licenses? How do we bring that to Alien, as an example? How do we bring that into Predator, Planet of the Apes, those kind of things? Take that, that really simplified, matted down, sim streamlined look to new characters. Now, um, I, I, I well, Street Fighter, come on. I mean, we, the, yeah. the, the, the figures of Street Fighter were all big and doesn't have any movement at all. Well, they made the G.I. Joe versions, you know, but those are the Matchbox version too with the little yeah. rubber band and they get real loosey goosey and they don't really stand up. Uh, same thing, we just came back and like, what do we want to make? And I was like, oh man, I always, let's make Street Fighter. I love Street Fighter. It's not a whole lot more. Uh, heavy lifting than that. It's like, cool, let's make it. Now, you got Hellboy. Yeah, and this is specifically the comic book version of Hellboy. This is not the movies. So this was working directly with Mignola on this and just trying to, same thing, make make cool figures of Hellboy. Yeah. Making a, a line of figures about the worst. Yeah, the worst was our own idea. We sat it around, we we're talking about any old toy line. The best characters in any toy line are always the villains. You know, it's Darth Vader in Star Wars, it's Skeletor in Masters of the Universe. The villains are always the coolest. So we were just like, let's, why don't we just design a line for ourselves, who cares if it sells or not, of just the coolest bad guys we can think of. So that's what we did. We made a line of all the coolest bad guys. So they're the worst. They're the worst of the worst. And uh, all the blisters on them are coffins and everything. We try to play it up. And we really didn't know if people would buy it or not. And it's, instead, people have gone crazy for it. And then Stupid Buddy Studios just announced that they're going to turn it into an animated cartoon. So those the, that'll be really exciting to see how that turns out. I, I can see here the, the alien uh, 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 serious the, the Kenner line, yeah. But so Kenner, Kenner, yeah, right. Yeah, so this is where we started reaction from five years ago. Is we remade the original Kenner prototypes into action figures, and that started the whole reaction thing. So when we came back through uh, with Alien, as we brought back reaction under ours, the original figures are all painted like the Kenner prototypes. So we wanted to remake them movie accurate as well as make the rest of the crew that was never prototyped. So now you can get everybody from the Nostromo and you can get all the color variants of them. The, the, the one we can see in the back is the reaction, but it's uh, the Funko launching? No, that was us. So we started oh, it and we did the first wave, mm. but then it was, at that time we were a smaller company, it was really okay. bigger than we could handle. So we partnered with Funko to all help right. us get it out there. And so most people ended up knowing it and buying it from Funko. Yeah. As we all know, Funko became a, a huge, huge company, which is wonderful for them. But uh, so we've now brought it back and we're sort of saying like, here's the original figures and here's a revamp to what it was. Well, we have the, the Jack Kirby version of it. I mean, it's, it's, it's sort of looked like... Uh, um, uh, the G word? Galactus? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody explain that. So this is Jack Kirby did some projects. He worked at Marvel, then he left and went to DC. And after he left DC, he did a few other projects outside of that. And one of them was Lord of Light. And that's where this character comes from. So we partnered with Heavy Metal Magazine to make a toy of, oh, of okay. the Lord of Light. Because, I mean, l l look at that guy. I mean, he's amazing. And it's, yeah. it's that wonderful late era Kirby with all the gears and dials and detail. It's just such a cool, cool character. We were just like, we have to make this into a toy. You have Planet of the Apes, figures that we only get as Meagle. Yes, yeah, they only came out as Mego. There's been a few others since, but same thing. It's like these should have been made. There should have been three and three quarter figures in 1970 something. They should have been made. So let's let's make them. And then we're gonna make stuff from all the movies. Like the one I'm personally most excited about is is the clear brain guys from Beneath the Planet of the Apes. You know, that's a obscure character, but man, I can't wait to make that one. We have this uh, toxic. 
Toxic Avenger. Avenger. Yeah, same thing, just a, a, a random character that most everybody knows, but no one's ever made a real toy of Toxie. So let's make Toxie, and then we'll do him in the movie colors, and then the Toxic Crusader colors, which was the Playmates toy line in the 90s. All right. And then, yes, and then yeah, the Shogun. I, I was telling you that. You were, you were mean, leading Mexico, into... It's, it's a great consumer of Japanese uh, culture and anime, yep. and we had all this uh, Shogun yeah, series had, and on videotapes. Yeah, you had Mazinger, you had Mazinger Z. That, that was on broadcast television, but the other ones were only on, oh. on, on VHS and the video club. Yeah, and we didn't have it on TV here, but we had the Shogun Warrior, the giant toys. Yeah. So you could get the 24-inch figure, so we all knew it from the toys. But it's it's same thing. Let's like let's bring it back. Let's do Mazinger. Let's do Mazinger Z. We'll do Get a Dragon, and then let's bring in the villains that most people don't know. They don't know Garada K7. They don't know Roker on Q9. They don't know Doublus M2. Let's get some of the villains in there and just make some robots. The muscles, yes, which was uh, it was. I think it's very popular in here uh, in, in the U.S. Yeah. But in Mexico, we didn't have this. I mean, we we got the little soldiers but yeah. never get uh, anything like the muscles. Yeah, so in, in the States, what they did is they brought a line called Kaneko Man in Japan over to America, and they rebranded it as muscle. And there's about 600 different characters, and they're just little wrestlers. All right. So when you would go to the store, though, they were like a dollar a pack. So anytime you were at the store with your mom and you were throwing a fit, it was like buying a Hot Wheels. She would just buy you a pack of muscles, and then you would, because they were cheap, and you would shut up and quit crying. So you ended, every kid had a pile, had a bucket full of muscle. Like every kid always had like 20 Hot Wheels cars. He didn't collect Hot Wheels, but he just ended up with them. Yeah. You ended up with piles of muscle, but they never did any licensing with muscle. So we're taking that format from muscle and then applying it to things like making Masters of the Universe, making Street Fighter, making Alien, Shoguns, making Mega Man, the worst, you know, Robotech, whatever, making all these different licenses in muscle. And you have Super Size now. Super Size, yeah. Super Size has been one of those things we wanted to make for a long, long time. The 18-inch, uh, obviously, the 18-inch Alien for, that Kenner made for the first movie is one of those incredibly rare and amazing toys. It's, it's a perfect toy, and it's really hard to find. It's really expensive. But as collectors, that's the first movie. What about the second movie? So then what we wanted to do is make a companion toy to it, and it's the suit from the second movie. So it's got a different head, different forearms, different hands, and different feet. The rest of the suit's the same, but that's, so it's actually a different alien, but it's yeah. the second movie meant to match the first movie. And what are, what are these? This is just a lot of the vinyl toys that we've been making for the last 15 years. Uh, Obviously, there are our own creations, so you know people don't instantly recognize them. But you know they're a lot of fun to make, and we still like them. There's a whole group of different people that collect these different kind of things. So, hey, but not least, you got the new Shogun Warriors. Yeah, so we've been working on these for a couple of years. We did the Stormtrooper a few years ago, and then followed up with Black Hole. Then we did Boba Fett. We did them in the original Empire colors. We did them in the toy colors from Kenner and then the prototype colors. And then we have a couple new ones that we're, we were hoping to announce here, but we'll end up announcing a little bit later. But we've got a whole nother line of Shoguns that are coming out. Now, how people, I mean, m most of this is production will be available at some point in the year. Yeah, but the, 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 the things that I, uh, are already available, how yeah. can people buy them? Well, you can go to super7store.com, so super number seven, store.com and we have everything available there and then uh in the case of you we're working on our mexican distribution right now okay well, there we go up. but but if you ship internationally as of well. course of course but are you kidding we border you we're in san francisco we're in california yeah we're, we're, it's just right over the street no big deal go to tj and put it store exactly <laughs> it's no problem <laughs> well uh this has been a great tour a great talk thank you very much for thank this thank you y bueno, pues nosotros tenemos que despedir aquí el programa. Muchas gracias por acompañarnos. Yo soy Ricardo Méndez, ven está en la cámara. Y esto es Juegos, Juguetes y Coleccionables desde Super 7 aquí en Toy Fair. Hasta la próxima.